Welcome to worship this Sunday, last Sunday in November, gearing up for Advent season and the birth of our Savior. Welcome to all, it's good to see everyone. And as we prepare for worship, let's open our hymnals to Majesty 176 in your hymnal. And stand if you're able. today. The first announcement is that the St. Petersburg Men's Ensemble will perform Saturday, December 2nd. There's a dinner at 6 p.m., then a 7 p.m. concert at the Marathon United Methodist Church. I'll hang that up. Also, Preble, we need people to sign up to work the 10 to 1 p.m. shift, and we need people to sign up for brownies and cookies and things. This is this Saturday coming up. Ralph and I unfortunately will not be here. I will be at a class Saturday morning. So we will, we will sign up for the January one. But we do need more people to sign up. Any other announcements? Yes. You have an announcement? Yes. What? Your tooth? Yes, his tooth fell out. Your tooth oh, no. fell out? Yes, two teeth fell out? By themselves? Like they were loose? One of them by himself. One of them I kind of knocked out. <laughs> well, all you want for Christmas is your two front teeth, right? I, I, I get the echo. <laughs> oh, Lord. Any other announcements? I see Connie has a new date on the bulletin. Pick up poinsettias and reach between 5.30 and 6 on December 5th. What day is that? Is that Tuesday. a Tuesday? Tuesday instead of Monday, originally. So pick up your orders here Tuesday night. Any other announcements? Then let's be in an attitude of worship, please. Father, what an exciting time we're beginning worshiping in preparation for the birth of our Savior, the birth of a new beginning for all of us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love for us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, open in your hymnal, Christ the King, our call to worship, 721 in the hymnal. And we'll read this together. 721 in the hymnal. Almighty and everlasting God, it is your will to restore all things to Christ, whom you have anointed priest forever and ruler of creation. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And our opening hymn, He Lives, 310 in your hymnal. Stand if you're able.
Savior does indeed live. And now, what time is it? Does anyone know what's next? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Children's time, maybe? Yeah. Children's time. Let me see those teeth. O God, above the heavens, let your glory over all the earth be found. The Lord reigns and is dropped in majesty. 
The Lord is robed and graded with strength. The Lord has established the throne. It shall never be moved. Your throne has been established from the old. You are ever left. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their voice. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord is high. The Lord on high is mighty. Your, Your decrees are very sure. Holiness begins to your house, O Lord, forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. come to our joys and concerns. We'll start with our blessings this week. Does anyone have any blessings? I do. I want to. One eye surgery very well. Oh. Um, there's plenty around here. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was hopefully in, in, on the fourth that we'll have the second one done. And they tell me as of Tuesday in the eye that I had corrected. I had 20-25 vision. Possibly no glasses for me. Wow. And you're getting the other one done Tuesday? Okay. <laughs> Any other joy? Ralph? Well, it was a joy to have all those people for Thanksgiving. And I like the way we uh, went around the table and everybody said what they're saying before. And we had a lot of people for Thanksgiving. It's a joy they were there and a joy they're gone. <laughs> Any other joys? <laughs> I love them dearly, Ryan. So, a couple of things. Um, my brother had his stomach surgery on the seventh. It was completely successful. His recovery has been a breeze. Um, and on Thanksgiving, he hit his first milestone. Milestone. He's down to three hundred and fifty pounds. Wow. So that's started, amazing. He started a little over a year, year and a half ago, uh, at pretty much a five hundred. So. Wow. Um, He's, he's come a long ways. He has a long ways to go, but uh, he, he told me the day before Thanksgiving he started stage three, which means he can have soft foods like yogurt and scrambled eggs and things like that. He's like, I made my first egg. He made one scrambled egg. He's like, I couldn't even eat it all. He wow. ate three quarters of one scrambled egg, and he's like, I'm too full. <laughs> That's amazing. So, and the other joy that I have, uh, this Monday I am returning to work. All right. So, um, I've been given the opportunity to come back slow and uh, do some work from home. Um, you know, so I'm just not going to push myself. I'm going to, you know, pray for success. So that is amazing. We are so happy for you. We will definitely be praying. Carolyn. We were able to have Thanksgiving at Dad's, and I think there were about 27 people there in all. And Joe was able to come. He came about 11:30 and probably left around. 2.30, and by 2.30 he said he was really, really tired, and he pretty much sat in the chair the whole time. Um, I think just all the people in the movement around him probably just made his head whoa. And he still has the double vision, and he, I talked to him about it, and the doctor said due to this fall, it compromised um, optic nerve number six. And he has to work on, and it may be just a, a matter of time, it may heal itself. But fortunately, it wasn't seven at the time of the fall. And, and that's what's causing this double vision. When you look at him, both eyes look different. And he always looks like he just woke up from a long sleep. <laughs> so. so they're saying it might heal itself. It might heal itself. Let's pray for Joe. 
Any other joy? Just Connie. Uh, NASCAR season is done. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> That's a big joy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sorry. So sorry, dear. <laughs> 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 Now it's back to the projects, right? Yeah, yeah. Any others? Just that we had a wonderful Thanksgiving with two thirds of our family. That's what Thanksgiving is all about family and friends and just being together. Any others? Let's move on to our concerns this morning. Walt. I want to thank you for putting me in prayers for that tick bite. Oh my so gosh. I'm telling you. You went to the emergency room, right? And you got it. Yeah. Vicky said you got it. Yeah. You couldn't get the rest of it out. So. And they gave you antibiotics. Yeah, just for that day. I mean, to get started because it was pretty sore. Wow. Yeah. I just made me out. Did the rest of it come out? Yeah, they got it out. Yeah, they got it out there. They had a hard time in there, too. They had a hard time getting it out? In fact, she used a needle with a oh. syringe still on it and picked it out. Oh, wow. Actually, you think about it, it's like a little shovel. Wow. Out of there. <laughs> Not a good place to have a tick either no. on the neck, yeah. no. But we're, this is a blessing because it's out. Right. Yeah. Any other concerns? Sue? I have a neck. <laughs> We're talking about necks this morning. <laughs> that just won't straighten up. I took the plunge, and never in my life have I ever been to the chiropractor. But I went, and he's awesome. <laughs> Connie is the one that <clears throat> gave me the number of the one that, that they use, and um, he just says they're going to take it slow because it's a mess. So... Wow. It's just time. Do you, do you feel any better? <laughs> um, I may have a little more movement, but I just, I told him I want I mean, pain. she's almost looking at you right now. It's a miracle. <laughs> I, want, I want to get the pain out of my head, and he's not guaranteeing that he can do that. One step at a time. Let's yep. be in prayer for Sue. So. Any other concerns? Okay. Let's be in prayer then, shall we? Thank you for today, Father. Thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship. Thank you for Jesus Christ who died for us so that we could have forgiveness of our sins. And thank you for the continual shower of blessings you pour down upon us. Just the blessings of healing for the people we love. We praise you for the blessings of healing in Betty's eyes. And we're so thankful that she may no longer need glasses. We praise you for the healing of Eric Cheeseman. And we just pray that he continues on his journey to health. And we praise you for our brother in Christ, Ryan. And Father, we wish him success. We pray that he has success and when he starts working and that he doesn't push himself too hard. And we're just so thankful for this blessing. We pray for Jim, our brother in Christ, who's homesick with a cold. And we pray and thank you for all of our family and friends and everything that goes along with Thanksgiving. What a blessed holiday it is to spend time with those we love and fellowship and, and food. And We thank you also, Father, for the healing of Joe Crandall. And we ask that you continue to put your hand of healing upon him and let that optic nerve heal so he doesn't have double vision anymore. And we thank you, Father, for the blessing of Walt and the enormous blessing of him getting that tick out of his neck. And we pray that he has no complications from that whatsoever. And Father, we pray for our sister Sue, our sister in Christ with her neck issues. And we ask that you pour blessings and healing down upon her and take the pain away from her. We ask that you hear our prayers, Father, our prayers, your faithful people, prayers for those that are listed in our bulletins, prayers for those that we've spoken of, and prayers for those that remain in our hearts, 
and prayers that are unspoken. And for all of us, we ask for your blessing and your healing. Our hearts are heavy today, Father, with the burdens and cares of everything that we have to do in life, of everyone who's close to us who's dealing with any kind of illness. Hear our prayers, Father. Let those who need your healing feel your comfort and love and steady presence and remind them that there are storehouses of healing in heaven. All they have to do is believe and receive. Hear our prayers for those who grieve and mourn, for those who are depressed, for those who feel they have no hope. Let them feel your comfort and your peace and lead them to the feet of our Savior. Hear our prayers for the lost, Father. Let us be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ for this broken world, for this broken people, for this community in Kilowog. We ask these things today in the name of your precious Son, our glorious Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers, Father. Hear our petitions as they're carried to heaven on the wings of angels and lifted to you as we pray the ancient words taught to us by our Savior, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer our gifts unto the Lord. church and down upon these people who love you. We offer these gifts to you, Father, because we love you. We offer these gifts to you to save and heal a broken world. Multiply these gifts for service. And Father, bring lost souls to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ before it's too late. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we sing our congregational anthem, Lily of the Valley, 2062, in the faith we sing.
Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, and 13 and 14, found on page 1015. This is Judgment Before the Ancient One. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A steam of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. And I watched the night visions. I saw one like a human being coming with clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kinship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingdom, kinship, kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Today's New Testament reading is Revelations chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, found on page 297. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, every eye will see him, even those, who pier even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now our hymn of preparation, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, 154 in your hymnal. Six verses. Now we're going to do verses 1 and 6. Verses 1 and 6, 154. <laughs> Gospel reading today is Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. The judgment of the nations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord! When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you, a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? 
And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are, that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. And Christ the King Sunday is the first Sunday after Thanksgiving. And it's also the last Sunday prior to the start of our new church year, which begins with the season of Advent. And on this Sunday today, we celebrate the authority of Christ as King and Lord of all things. This blessed event at a future time when Christ rules, when evil is defeated, when good will prevail always. That's explained in detail in the book of Revelation, chapter 19. I'm just going to read it. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but him, he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. And on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And as I'm reading that and thinking about that, we don't really talk a lot or think about this future time when the Son of Man is going to come back and he's going to judge the sheep and the goats. He will be the judge. He will be the final judge between the sheep and the goats, the good fish and the bad fish, the good wheat and the bad wheat. And when I think about judges, what does that bring up for you, this picture of a judge? Because most of us, and I say most of us, have seen a judge at least once in our lifetime. If you haven't, then I applaud you, but most of us have. And since we don't go to court a lot, except for Ed, most of us don't know how the court system really works. So I learned about the court system through traffic court. And I'll paint this scenario for you. I'm sitting in court for a traffic violation. And there's all these people sitting around me. Some are talking and laughing. Some are really quiet. And some, like me, are really nervous. And I'm asking myself, why do I have to be here with these obvious criminals? Why am I sitting here? <laughs> I see the judge come in, and people start getting called up to the bench. And I try sizing up the judge by listening to his conversations with the people who go up. One is there for shoplifting. One's there for driving without a license. And I think, well, mine's not that bad after all. It's it's just a measly traffic violation. And then it's my turn. And my name is called. Well, Mary Ann Taylor approached the bench. And I'm nervous and I'm fluttery and I feel like a guilty child as I come before this figure of power and authority. And as I'm walking up, I'm refining my explanation in a way that's going to benefit me. I'm thinking in my head, I have this all figured out, right? And then I get up there and I stand. The judge asks me one question. What did you do? That's not the question I wanted him to ask me. <laughs> I wanted him to ask me, what do you do for a living? He asked me the wrong question. He didn't ask me about my family, my children, my beliefs, my heart, my values, my faith. We could have talked for a long time about all that. But he simply asked, what did you do, Mrs. Taylor? 
Well, Your Honor, I said I passed a car. Hmm, he says. Into oncoming traffic? Yes, Your Honor. But there was only one car and it was really far away, way far away. I had plenty of time before that car was coming down. And he said to me, well, that policeman who was driving in that car way far away in the other lane didn't think he was so far away because he had to hit his brakes to avoid colliding with you. And I'm thinking, this isn't going the way I want it to go. <laughs> I want to tell the judge what a good, loving person I am. I wanted to talk about my decency, how I love nature and animals and how I go to church and how I really don't belong here in front of him. And those things have to be worth some leniency, I think. But what did I do? I violated the law. I was declared guilty. And the judge has to uphold the law. It can't be one way for a good person and another way for a bad person who did the same thing, can it? But wait, I've been told by the officer when I got the ticket that the fine might be reduced. And it was. And here lies the parable. I titled the sermon today, Our Final Day in Court. And that will be when Christ comes back to earth as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he'll judge the good and the bad. And the gospel story we read today is all about that time. The king will judge. He'll look at the goats, and he'll say to them, what did you do with your life? What did you do for the hungry and the poor and the needy? What did you do? Oh, yes, the judge will say, you're a good person. Right? Yeah, I hear it. You love your family. You love your children. You go to church. That's great, but that's not what I asked you. Now, the goats, they expect leniency. They expect understanding. After all, these goats are good people. Just ask anyone. But they miss the point. The point is, they didn't believe in Jesus Christ, so their sins are not forgiven. And Jesus will turn to them and say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Their sins, they're going to be revealed, but not as forgiven sins. And here's where the leniency of the judge comes into play. Same sins, but with one difference. The sheep, they've been pardoned. They receive leniency. They receive mercy and grace instead of damnation. The one thing they have that the goats don't have is Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we will stand at the judgment seat, but Christ has paid our debt. Our sins have been wiped away by his blood. The goats, they refuse to listen all their life. The goats refuse to believe all their life. And to be honest, do any of us think about this coming judgment from the Son of Man? You see, most of us, we're not concerned about this final day we have in court because we're so preoccupied with life, with our jobs, with our problems, with our sufferings, with our celebrations, with our business of living. <coughs> And besides, God is love. Everyone's going to get in heaven because God is love. So the goats, they're really surprised to stand before this judge, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus, he explains this time of judgment in Matthew. In those days before the flood of Noah, people were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving their children to be married until the day Noah entered the boat. They knew nothing about what was happening until the flood came and destroyed them. And it will be the same when the Son of Man comes. And Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the righteous judge, he'll ask the goats, what did you do? What did you do with your life in service to others? Did you feed the poor? Did you help the needy? Did you love your neighbor? Did you put others before yourself? Did you believe in me? Did you save lost souls? Well, no, Lord, the goats say, but I'm a really good person. Ask my mother. She'll tell you I'm a great person. Ask my friends. Just give me one more shot at this, Lord. I'll get it right this time. But the judge is going to give the verdict. Jesus is going to say to the goats, you've robbed the poor. You were troublesome to the sick and weak. You pushed them away with your horns. You devoured them with your greed and your lifestyle. Depart from me into eternal damnation. What, says the goats? They're expecting leniency. After all, they're really good people. But it's too late. Once the door is shut, the door is shut. And when Christ comes, it will be too late. There was screaming and crying from those not on the ark in the day of the flood. 
and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth on the day of judgment. You know, one of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. I love C.S. Lewis. And here's what he says about hell. There is no doctrine which I would more willingly remove from Christianity than hell if it lay in my power. I would pay any price to be able to say truthfully, all will be saved. But all won't be saved. We see here a picture of Jesus Christ in the book of Daniel, the Old Testament lesson, with God, the Ancient of Days. And God gives his son, Jesus Christ, all power and authority and dominion. And Daniel, Daniel sees this vision of the coming judgment 2,500 years ago. He sees millions of people, 10,000 times 10,000, standing before the judgment seat. And it says, the court was seated and the books were opened. In Revelation 20, it says, the dead are judged from the things which were written in the books. And God is clear that everyone will, will be judged by the same rules. However, believers, they're going to receive the leniency of the court, the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And the unbelievers will receive that which they chose. God didn't choose this for them. They chose it. John 12, he who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So the books are opened. And all of us are going to be judged according to our works, as a believer or an unbeliever. Your works, how you represented Jesus on earth. Your every word, your every thought, your every deed. Without Jesus, we would all be judged as wanting. But because of Jesus Christ, when that book of life is open to determine your eternal destiny, your name will be in the book of life. The New Testament reading today in Revelation lets us know that as believers, we have nothing to fear from the judgment. God's sheep stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive our crowns for the works we've done for Christ. As believers, we're forgiven. And God's grace and mercy, that's going to be apparent to all, to everyone standing there, because our sins are gone. But the goats, they will go before the great white throne, the great white throne judgment, where their works will be judged, but without leniency. And Revelation tells us that he is coming. Be ready, the king is coming to claim his people. Who knows when it will be, but I really think we're the generation which will see him come. The world is not going to continue forever. And I wish Ed was here because I'm going to talk about a quote from John Hagee about physics. The second law of thermodynamics, otherwise known as the law of entropy, declares that all systems tend to disorder after time. Well, he's, he's just saying that, like all things, the earth, along with the physical universe, it's going to wear out. And Jesus is going to come and he's going to make things new again. He tells us that he will return. And when he does, he's going to separate the lost from the saved. So we as Christians should celebrate Christ the King Sunday with anticipation and jubilation. And we should praise and glorify our great and glorious King. You know, if we would just let the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God be part of our everyday lives, we would do so much more to honor him. This time of Christ's coming will be glorious for us, but terrifying for those who aren't ready. And we all have people we love who we want to go to heaven, but we know some of them have not found the Lord yet. And for those you love who still don't know him, what can we do? I think, what can we do to save those that we love? We can pray for them. Because prayer is a powerful and effective weapon. And you could pray every night and every day and not see any difference. But sooner or later, those prayers will lift that person. And that person will come to Christ. It could take a lifetime. But we can pray. We can show them the love of God by our example and by our witness. You know, we're all so imperfect. We are all so unworthy. The only difference between us is that we know Jesus is our Savior. 
And Jesus tells his, us, his sheep, that by this knowledge we can and must bring others to his saving grace before it's too late. He says, be gentle, be prayerful, be persistent in your prayers, be faithful, be one of God's sheep, because Jesus says his final promise to us in the last pages of the Bible, I'm coming soon, and we need to be ready, and we need to pray for those who have not found him yet. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with God's people. Amen. And now our closing hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, 327 in your hymnal. prepared for you. We leave this sacred space to claim the riches and glorious inheritance that are ours through Christ. Go out into the world to share your blessings with all in need. Amen. Amen. And our benediction song, Christ Beside Me, 2166.
blessed week. <laughs>